name is Tom Byers, and we are from Stanford University, as you just heard. I'm an engineering professor there. I've been teaching there about 20 years, and before that, I worked in high tech after graduating from Berkeley. But as a child, I grew up in Atlanta, ended up in a southern rock band playing things like Free Bird. Can you play Free Bird on that? Maybe some other time. Maybe some other time. But we got to jam last night with Nina, and that was uh, pretty extraordinary, the person you just heard from. So who are you? Hey, everyone. I'm Deanna. I just graduated from Stanford in December with both a master's and bachelor's in engineering. And kind of in the middle of all that, I spent a year at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music, where I studied viola performance. During my time at Stanford, I had the opportunity to participate in a bunch of different entrepreneurship courses and programs, both as a student and as a teaching assistant with several professors, including Tom. Yeah, well, like many of you watching, um, and, and some who are educators, you love it, right? It, you get to teach something you're passionate about. Well, we do too. We've been te teaching this thing called entrepreneurship lately. Now, entrepreneurship, oh, whoa, it is so popular right now. I bet today you've heard the word several times. You certainly will hear it the rest of the day, and including, you know, it's close cousins like innovation and creativity and leadership. So what the heck is going on? And you know, building on the theme of TEDx, this acceleration theme, we absolutely see it as a way to accelerate your own personal growth and impact, no matter where you live. You really don't have to move to Silicon Valley or become a programmer or something like that in order to uh, benefit from uh, entrepreneurship education. So let's dive into a few examples um, that we've seen lately that hopefully will convince you. Let's start with you, Deanna. I grew up in Boston, and I arrived at Stanford in the fall of 2010. And like a lot of other uh, incoming freshmen, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to study. So after taking a bunch of courses in a variety of areas, I ultimately decided on engineering. Through the engineering school, I had the opportunity to take a bunch of different classes in design and in entrepreneurship, which I enrolled in not because I was super stoked on starting a business, but because I thought the subject matter was pretty interesting and because I thought I'd learn a lot of really useful and practical skills and concepts. Well, that I did, but the real surprise in taking all these entrepreneurship courses was that they actually fundamentally changed the way that I approach music, too. So let me give you a couple of specific examples of what I mean. First, because of my entrepreneurship education, I now think of music as a product. If we go to the world of startups for a moment, we have these concepts of vision and execution, where vision is basically, what do you want to do? And execution is, well, can you do it? Both of these are absolutely essential for a company to succeed, because without the vision, there's really no point. And without the execution, it's never going to actually take off. Well, in music, we have these similar concepts, actually. But instead of vision, we call it musicality. And instead of execution, we call it technique. So I want to show you, rather than telling you what it is, I want to show you what I mean. So I'm going to play two short excerpts of music. This first one here is from a piece by Bach. And it's a really great example of musicality. It has a very lyrical line, and it has a lot of musical message to say. Technique, on the other hand, is this idea of actually just operating the instrument. So this is another short excerpt of music by a man named Hindemith, and it's considered to be a very highly technical piece. <laughs> Let's just forget the rest of the talk. Just keep playing. We'll get a little more of that this okay. afternoon, actually. I'll be back at, what, oh, 1.32? Yeah, cool. Well, so again, in music, both musicality and technique are really essential for a successful performance. 
But the relationship between these two, especially in classical music, often gets a little bit uh, biased, right? So there's so much focus on technique that people sometimes forget about the musicality. Well, in reality, it should be quite the opposite. Technique should be there to serve the musical message. Seeing this so clearly played out in the startup entrepreneurship world, where execution is really there to serve the vision of the company, helped me reconnect with this idea in music, and it's fundamentally changed the way that I both practice and perform. So that's one idea, that music is, is a product. The second takeaway that I had from entrepreneurship education is that, to no surprise to most of you, musicians are basically mini businesses. So whether it's figuring out how to differentiate yourself or reach potential customers or market yourself, basically all the skills required to succeed as a musician are exactly those that startups need to figure out in order to grow and succeed. I feel really fortunate to have had this education through the engineering school at Stanford because oftentimes musician, musicians really don't get this training. So as you can see, studying entrepreneurship has fundamentally changed the way I both approach music and also pursuing a more creative career path. So since graduating, I have been working with several different organizations to bring more of this entrepreneurship training into creative and artistic communities. And also as a musician, I've been playing around with different kinds of concert formats and ways of expressing music that aren't necessarily typical. Thanks, Deanna. So let's think about this. Does it mean you have to be playing viola since you were four years old or go to Stanford or MIT to get this kind of training or awakening or transformation? No, this is the good news. It's that uh, there's some of you in the audience in these pictures. This is a picture of, uh, or pictures of a bunch of, of students and faculty and university leaders from around the United States that we've had a chance to get to know over the last five years on a project to make sure that every campus has really cool offerings and opportunities to learn entrepreneurship and leadership and creativity and design and things like that. So there's some North Dakota State University people in here. I know, I know where you are. And then how about there's some University of North Dakota people in here. I think that was a little louder, don't you? I think so. Uh, okay, well anyway. It, it has really been cool to see uh, courses and extracurricular activities and uh, maker spaces or you know, design studios all popping up, even helping each other, the faculty and the students helping each other raise money so they can even offer more opportunities to learn the kinds of stuff that make, makes for what Deanna was talking about. Really been proud of that. So, whoa, is, it, is, just, is this just relevant to the United States? Because certainly the challenges facing the world are not. It, it, it turns out that entrepreneurship education is a global phenomenon. And this is a project we got to specifically work on and visit the United Arab Emirates in the Persian Gulf, in the Middle East. You know, a, a place that is very, very important and strategic to the entire planet right now. Here we are presenting to the Minister of Education. That means the dude that runs all education in the United Arab Emirates. He and the Prime Minister of the whole country have instituted a requirement that every junior, every junior going to college in that country takes a course in innovation and entrepreneurship. And we had the pleasure of developing the syllabus and training the faculty to make it happen. I can't tell you how inspirational it was to sit in a final exam like this with Emirati women at the Abu Dhabi Women's College and have them learning the same material, the same content about that topics that you did just several years ago. You know, policy leaders and political leaders all agree. It is important to fight extremism with peace and diplomacy. And of course, we feel entrepreneurship can do that. Wouldn't it be terrific if that kind of, uh, that kind of knowledge would br bring us closer together to some of uh, different parts of the world. Well, you know, it still is a dangerous world. We have adversaries that want to harm our country, and they're doing it in unconventional ways. I mean, I know you've read the news lately. I had the pleasure this spring of working on a course with one of the founders of this movement called the Lean Startup 
movement, his name is Steve Blank, with two retired Army colonels. And we developed a course using those methods, the methods that she learned that turned her around with her music and the methods that we've been teaching uh, to you know, start new businesses in the UAE. Well, we use those methods to help our Department of Defense. They gave us the problems. That's right, the Department of Defense in Washington, the Pentagon, along with some intelligence agencies, gave us the problems they're working on, which are not conventional. They're asymmetric, as they call it. And the, our students in this course use these entrepreneurship met methods to solve them. It was hugely successful, so successful this spring, now it's being rolled out across the country. It may come to one of the colleges here soon, sort of like an on on entrepreneurship, that's a lot for me to say, um, ROTC program. We really need to be faster and be leaner and be entrepreneurial and be innovative in fi fighting these really nasty adversaries that we face and that thr threaten our national security. So we appreciate you listening to Deanna's story about her transformation, to the fact that it's get, there's this mobilization across 300 colleges in, in America, uh, through the fact that it, we're using it for diplomacy in a place like the United Arab Emirates, as well as helping our own def Department of Defense. And this is gonna come from you know, all the colleges in America, helping them be uh, more successful in securing us. Uh, Deanna, thanks a lot. And thanks to Tom and to all the professors out there who are sharing this message and helping people understand that entrepreneurship is really not just about starting businesses, but really helping accelerate people's careers and build more fulfilling lives. So, it's been fun working with her. We like to play together. We did last night with Nina. Um, you know, in all seriousness, this is really, really cool to see in her lifetime that there's entrepreneurship and innovation education was, it went from something that was at a few MBA programs with a few competitions and a few courses to such availability. So you, you might still be saying, so what? You know, TED is incredible, and, and the TEDx's. Ideas were spreading. Well, I guess what our message was, this is ideas that are already spreading. They're there for you. Go take advantage of it. If you're over 30, check in your alma mater and you'll be surprised. If you're under 30, just really go and grab it at your, at your college and turn all these ideas into action. Accelerate forward is really, is really applicable here. Thanks so much, TEDx. Thank you.